In a can't intubate, can't oxygenate scenario, the anesthetist should immediately undertake a cannula cricothyroidotomy or cannula tracheotomy to achieve safe, simple, and fast oxygenation of the patient. If a cannula technique fails after a maximum of three attempts, or it is not successful within one minute, whichever comes first, the anesthetist should move to the left of the algorithm. If the airway anatomy is palpable, the scalpel bougie technique should be carried out. A standard Frova bougie with a 15 mm RapiFit connector, a size 6 endotracheal tube and a size 10 scalpel blade are required for this technique. The non-dominant hand identifies and stabilizes the cricothyroid membrane. When the cricothyroid membrane cannot be identified, the trachea may be used as an alternative location, but only if it is easily palpable. Using the dominant hand, a stab incision is made into the skin and the underlying airway using a size 10 scalpel with the sharp edge towards you. After feeling a pop as the blade enters the airway, gentle traction should be applied to the scalpel before it is rotated 90 degrees with the blade sharp edge ending up pointing cowardly. While maintaining perpendicularity, the blade should be pulled towards the anesthetist, producing a triangular hole in the skin and underlying airway. The operator should now switch hands so that the non-dominant hand holds the scalpel. The dominant hand now holds the bougie parallel to the floor, pointing away from the anesthetist. The tip of the bougie is then inserted into the airway whilst maintaining contact with the scalpel blade and using the blade as a guide into the opening of the airway. It is usual to feel a pop as the bougie enters the airway. The bougie then needs to be rotated and aligned with the airway before it is advanced into the trachea. Advancing the bougie into the airway should be a smooth procedure requiring not more than two fingers and gentle pressure. While advancing the bougie, tracheal rings can often be felt. If tracheal rings are not identified, it may be necessary to feel for holdup of the bougie to exclude gastric or pretracheal insertion. This should be again performed with gentle two finger pressure only. A 15 mm RapiFit connector must be attached to the Frova bougie to allow self-inflating bag oxygenation. This requires two operators, one to hold the bougie and one to bag. A size 6 endotracheal tube is then advanced over the bougie. While the non-dominant hand stabilizes the trachea, the dominant hand guides the tube using a continual 360 degree rotation technique to allow for smooth insertion of the tube into the airway. Note that we no longer recommend jetting down a bougie. After the stab incision, holding the scalpel in a not perpendicular fashion can obstruct the opening and make the insertion of the bougie difficult or impossible. After the stab incision, too much traction on the scalpel will narrow the incision, possibly rotate the trachea and can make the insertion of the bougie more difficult. Bougie insertion, other than in the horizontal fashion with the tip touching the scalpel blade can make the bougie tip go into a paratracheal plane and may result in paratracheal insertion of the bougie. Too deep insertion of the scalpel blade may result in tracheal back wall injury. Too much force while performing a stab incision may result in excessive damage to the airway. This may cause excessive bleeding or even result in tracheal transection. Bougie insertion depth should be limited between 10 to 15 centimeters. If further insertion is required to identify correct placement, it is ideal to withdraw it to this depth prior to oxygenation or tube insertion. Railroading a size 6 tube over the Frova bougie 
can result in the tip of the tube catching on the skin and subcutaneous tissues. By beginning and continuing rotation of the tube prior to and during railroading, tube insertion can be performed smoothly and safely.